Hello and welcome to this tutorial. This tutorial will help you set up your owl seat using the EasyLog software. We'll be working our way through how to set temperature thresholds as well as various alarm states and how to start your owl seat login. From the home page it's really easy to change the configuration. Just click custom setup and then configure all settings. You may get a warning sign to say that your LC has unsaved data on it, so remember to download the data to your computer first if you need it. The first configuration tab covers the basic settings for the logger, which include LED, display and sounder settings. In the basic settings you can rename your data logger, you can set the sample rate, you can turn on LED mode, display mode and you can enable the device's sounder. I'm going to name mine LC, I'll leave the sample rate as 10 seconds, I only want the LED to flash an alarm, I want the display to be permanently on and I'm going to leave the sounder enabled. We then have a separate tab for each of the channels and depending on which LC you have there will be one, two or three of these. The LC I'm using logs temperature and humidity so I only have two. They're all the same as far as alarms go, the difference is just in the unit scales that are available for that measurement parameter. So if I choose channel 1, you can see that the default is set to one high and one low alarm, which are already configured, but you can set yours to whatever you need them to be. If one of these alarms are not needed, then press the red button to the right to disable or enable this alarm. When enabled, you'll see that the configuration boxes now become selectable. So for example, you can now click in the high alarm threshold and change this to whatever you want it to be. Or you can change the value using the up and down arrows. That's all you need to do if you want to use the default alarms. If you want, you can turn alarm hold on and off. The hold alarm function means that once the alarm is triggered, the logger continues to tell me in the LC's display, sounder and LEDs, even if the temperature falls back below my threshold. It's a great way to find out if something's gone wrong without having to download the data and check it. Turning alarm hold off means that these alerts will automatically cancel when the readings return to normal. I can also set a delay for each alarm and that's how long the logger will wait after the threshold is reached before the alarm triggers. This is always defined as a number of samples and you can see that I can change the default zero to let's say six. When I click outside the box, I get told that this means a delay time of one minute. And this is because I left the login rate set to 10 seconds in the data logger tab. For high and low alarms, the delay count always resets to zero when the measurements come back inside the threshold. And that's really all you need to know in using the high and low alarms. However, at the bottom of the screen, I can expand out the advanced settings section and set more alarms and that's where it gets interesting. From the drop down menu, I can choose which type of alarm I want to add. Although if I have a disabled high or low alarm already configured, it won't let me add another one, but Elsie would like me to use those first. If I leave them disabled and select a new alarm, they get deleted from the setup because it looks like I don't want them. So you can see that I've added a pre-alarm, and that's a great way to get a reminder from the LC that I'm getting close to an alarm, but I'm not quite there yet. You may have noticed that for the actual high and low alarms, I didn't get the chance to change the trigger type. That's because by definition, a high alarm is always greater or equal, and a low alarm is always less or equal, but I can use the pre-alarm function to work either high or low. In advanced mode, all the alarms shown are enabled. And if I don't want them, I click the remove button. Now I'm going to add the low alarm back in and I can set the alarm hold if I want to, which I can't do for pre-alarms. Other than that, I'm going to leave the default settings. The other type of alarm I could use is a cumulative alarm. Now this is a very useful kind of alarm and it's often used for vaccine storage. Vaccines can be damaged by the total number of times spent outside the specified temperature window, even if only by a degree or so. You can see that I have both an upper and a lower limit here, and that's because with a cumulative alarm you need to set a band that is not okay for the measurements to sit in. This is the band that will trigger the alarm. You can see that the cumulative alarms have a delay setting, but this works slightly differently than for high and low alarms. A cumulative delay never resets if the measurement returns to normal. 
The LC keeps counting the number of samples, and when the total count matches the delay, then the alarm is triggered. The only way to zero a cumulative count is to stop the logger and restart it. As a shortcut, I can click on the max and min buttons to automatically set them to the limits that the LC can measure, but I can also set them to whatever I like. So I can set a cumulative alarm that will monitor from 2 degrees all the way down to minus 18, and another that works from 8 degrees up to 20 degrees. I can also set a high alarm with zero delay to activate at 20 degrees, as maybe my vaccines are spoiled right away if it gets that warm. You'll see that the LC is quite smart, and if I try to set an upper limit lower than the lower limit, say 8 and 10 degrees, I get an error message because that won't work. I can go on adding other alarms if I like, but the limit for each channel is a maximum of two alarms of each type and six alarms in total. It's the same process for each of the channels. If I go to channel two, I can name the channel, I can add a high alarm, a low alarm, a pre-alarm and a cumulative alarm. Now I can go to the start mode tab and select whichever start mode I want and then click start login and we're ready to go. If you have any other questions about using your LC, please check the Easy Lord channel on YouTube for more tutorials. Or you can visit the support section of our website. There's a direct link for this from the help menu on the web browser interface.